So for those of you who have been sub to me for a very long time, about a year, some of you will know that one of the very first videos that broke 1000 views for me, which at the time was very big, it kind of gave me a lot of exposure, uh, there were two of them in fact, it was about a certain girl named Mattress Girl. Now a quick recap, Mattress Girl used to go to the University of Columbia in America and she was famous for creating this performance art, well, performance, which involved a mattress. Why did it involve a mattress? Well, because she accused this young man of raping her during one night. Now, this was later proven to be false by Kathy Young, who reached out to the man, called uh, Paul Nungesser, who showed that she was talking absolute bollocks, Mattress Girl was. She lied to the press, lied to the university. In fact, he was cleared of any wrongdoing, first by the university and then when the police came to investigate, they could find no evidence. But she still continued this and the university still allowed her to do this despite the obvious stress it would cause Mr Nungesser and the fact that he was innocent, but they were still trying to push this narrative that he was guilty and they weren't just doing this in university, they were doing this in the media. Everyone thought he was guilty for months until Cathy Young broke the news. So that's the short summary of what happened to him and Mattress Girl. Now Mattress Girl's been in the news quite a few times, indeed I'll have to pad this video out because the story I have for the newest amount of information is quite small. So first, she was snubbed by the Dean of the University. <laughs> And then it was found out that Paul Nungesser was going to sue the university. And I think this is where we ought to start first before getting to the new information people. Because trust me, this new information, it's a doozy. Now this is like a two-parter kind of thing, this bit of news, because the first month it was kind of depressing, and then the second month things seemed to look up for this particular person linked to the Mattress Girl case, and yes, this is actually more to do with Paul Nungesser than it is Mattress Girl, but Mattress Girl caused the events that led up to this, hence why this is going to be covered, because I was meant to do it, but I never did. So a couple of months ago, uh, Paul Nungesser decided that he was going to sue Columbia University over the Mattress Girl protest, and in March of this year, it was dismissed. A federal lawsuit, a former male Columbia University student alleging the Ivy League school failed to stop harassment from classmates who accused him of rape, was dismissed on Friday. Paul Nungesser was accused of sexual misconduct by Emma Sulkovitz, who is Mattress Girl, two other female students and one male student. None of the accusations students filed with Columbia resulted in the university's finding Nungesser responsible. Nungesser has maintained he had consensual sex with Sulkovitz and went public with his side of the story in multiple news outlets during the 2014-15 school year. In April 2015, Nungesser sued Columbia and an art professor for not stopping what he called harassment by Sulkovitz as she became a prominent activist on campus and started a public demonstration of carrying around a mattress until Nungesser was expelled or left. Yes people, that was the aim of this performance art, to get him expelled or at the very least cause him distress which she succeeded in causing distress, but he did graduate at the same time that she did. In that footage, one can only imagine the anger going through him. US District Court Judge Gregory H. Woods on Friday granted Columbia's motion to dismiss the suit, but left open an option for Nungesser to try again. He wrote that Nungesser had failed to state a claim under Title IX, which prohibits discrimination on the basis of sex. Nungesser does not allege that Sulkovitz ever attempted to touch him, spoke to him, followed him, or otherwise interacted with him after the October 2013 hearing, Woods wrote in his opinion. Nor does he allege that she ever used his name in any of her public statements. Now you see, this is stupid because she didn't have to go near him, or touch him, or say his name, in order to basically harass him in this way. People knew the story in the university. He wouldn't have been bullied in class. All she had to do was do this performance art, get in the media, knowing full well that he also went public with his side of the story, and that would cause distress. That would make people want him to be expelled, because this is what university is like. So I don't like the idea that he couldn't state a claim at the time, because it's quite clearly the case. But 
We must move on, people. The dismissal is the latest in a trend of failed lawsuits from male students accused of sexual assault, who say their colleagues mistreated them under Title IX. The court rejected that Nungesser had his rights violated under gender equity law, in part because it rejected that calling someone a rapist, falsely or not, is a gendered term. Well, you see, that's funny, because it's gendered when we want to accuse people, if we want to talk about the act itself, but the word when someone who was falsely accused is trying to sue someone is all of a sudden not gendered. Isn't that funny, people? In the 2014-15 academic year, Sulkovitz began carrying a mattress around campus in an art activism project called Carry That Weight, saying that she would do so until her rapist was off campus. She later followed up with other art projects that used newspaper clippings and media coverage of her mattress protest. While one guest complained that he was denied a security escort on two occasions during that school year, the court also said he did not have his access to educational opportunities disrupted. The court also rejected one guest's complaint that Columbia failed to inform confidentiality rules because there was no evidence that the university disclosed information about his case. Several other claims by Nungesser were also dismissed. Woods said that Nungesser can file a second amended complaint with respect to certain claims, including that Columbia was guilty of intentional infliction of emotional distress and failing to uphold its policy against retaliation. He can also replead his Title IX claims. In other words, the court told him essentially try again if he'd like. Philip A. Bylet, an attorney representing Nungesser, said that they plan to do just that. He promised the public will hear more from their team on Woods' interpretation of Title IX. We very much believe in Paul Nungesser's case and further believe that a dismissal decision will represent a very, very re erroneous interpretation and application of, among other things, Title IX by the Total Post in an email Saturday. Of course, Columbia did not respond to requests for comment. And of course, in true Huffington Post style, at the end, they just had to tack on Sulkovitz faced high public harassment in the 2014-15 school year for people who believe she lied about the assault with no evidence, other than links to other articles but hey whatever we all know that most of that is just bullshit so that was the start of Paul Nungesser's fight and then a month later lawsuit against Columbia over mattress protest returns to court yes Nungesser finally got what he wanted and finally managed to be able to sue the university a lawsuit brought against Columbia University by a recent graduate accused of rape a case that made global headlines after the alleged victim began carrying a mattress around campus returned to court on Monday one month after a judge moved to dismiss the case. Nungesser first filed the lawsuit against Columbia, its president Lee Bollinger, its trustees and art professor John Kessler last April. He alleged that the school violated Title IX, the federal law that prohibits sex-based discrimination in federally funded education programs, by allowing Sulkovich to go through with her art project and to protest against him in other ways. Columbia sought to dismiss the lawsuit and argued that it was not responsible for Sulkovich's actions. In March, US District Court Judge Gregory Woods granted the motion to dismiss, saying Nungesser's allegations did not constitute sex-based discrimination. The new 100-page complaint again alleges the school participated in gender-based harassment, sexual harassment and gender-based misconduct against Nungesser that was severe, pervasive and objectively offensive and that deprived plaintiff Paul Nungesser of educational opportunities. Monday's complaint offers updated arguments for why Columbia allegedly discriminated against Nungesser as a male. It urges the, the judge to consider the case at hand if the genders were reversed and then proposes a scenario involving people named Paula and Emmett with details mirroring what happened between Nungesser and Sulkowitz. The new complaint also alleges that Columbia's policies and practices perpetuate the stereotype of the sex-driven male, which violates Title IX. For example, the complaint says Columbia's policies include no examples of sexual violence involving a male victim and a female perpetrator, only female victims and male perpetrators, or gender-neutral victims and perpetrators. Also, it says all videos shown during a mandatory sexual respect program for students focused on violence against women and not gender-based violence more generally. Further, the complaint alleges the school's sexual violence policies focus only on penetration as opposed to someone being made to penetrate. Columbia's institutional practice is largely based on the stereotype of the active, voracious, aggressive male and the passive, restrained, non-aggressive woman, the complaint says, which is sex-based stereotyping and overgeneralization that is discriminatory and a clear violation of Title IX. And I have nothing to add to that as that is completely and utterly true. The new complaint also alleges a double standard in which the school failed to investigate Nungess's claims that Sulkowitz was harassing him as it had investigated her claims, even though her conduct allegedly violated school policy. The complaint asks the list of defendants, Thomas Vu Daniel, a visual arts professor at Columbia, and Marianne Hirsch, an English professor there and director of the school's Institute for Research on Women, Gender and Sexuality. Now, I do seem to recall hearing about those two people in the initial videos that I did, and I don't know if I ever criticised them or not, but 
their names are familiar. Again, Columbia declined to comment, and Sukowitz previously declined to speak with Newsweek, but then said that his initial complaint was filled with lies, yet we all know who's the liar here, obviously. In addition to the Title IX violation, Nungesser also alleges violations of human rights law, breach of contract, unfair or deceptive trade practices, and intentional infliction of emotional distress. Nungesser is seeking damages and declaratory relief. Andrew Miltenberg, Nungesser's lawyer, says he expects Columbia will file a new motion to dismiss. Increasingly, male respondents in campus sexual assault cases are suing their schools for discrimination. Some of those lawsuits have gained traction in recent months, as cases against Washington and Lee University, Brown University and Brandeis University have survived motions to dismiss. Advocates for sexual assault victims are critical of such lawsuits, saying they fear schools might evaluate sexual assault reports not based on facts or merit, but on which party seems more likely to sue. Now, of course, they will say that, wouldn't they? Because they've got a narrative to push. These people only tend to advocate for one half of the story, which is women and not men. So you can see why they have this fear. There is no fear here. It's just fear mongering. I must move on, people, because time is of the essence. If you want to read all the articles, they will be in the description box down below for you to read, as I couldn't read everything because of time. And we must move on to the next part of the story of Mattress Girl. And that is, of course, her new art exhibition that she opened a few months back. Moving beyond Mattress Girl, artist Emma Sulkovitz pushes the conversation forward. Yes, she's an artist and she's pushing conversations forward. Incredible people, it's incredible. When you're falsely accused, you are demonised for the rest of your life. If you are the accuser, well, you get a career in the art industry. This is just insane. Emma Sulkowitz is present at Coagula Curatorial. If the name is unfamiliar, it's because she's better known as Mattress Girl, the Columbia University student who in 2014 began carrying a mattress on campus to protest the university's refusal to express spell the student she accused of rape. The performance became a highly visible flashpoint in discussions of campus sexual violence. Sukowitz graduated last spring and her first solo outing, titled simply Self-Portrait, is a frank response to this media attention. Yeah, of course, but that wasn't her first solo outing. Her first solo outing was the porno that she did about the rape. I mean, or I mean the alleged rape, because she wasn't raped. Everyone knows this. It's good to see the LA Times missing an important piece of information. No mattresses are in sight. Only Sulkowitz, an uncannily lifelike sculpture of her. Emmatron, standing on matching white pedestals. Empty pedestals are placed before artists and artwork, and visitors are invited to step up to talk with them. What, talk with the lifelike sculpture of her? Or to talk with each other? That's so stupid. And yeah, there's the lifelike wax sculpture of her. It's just frightening, isn't it? I bet Paul Nungesser sees this and thought, why the hell did I even sleep with this girl? But we must move on, people. You may speak to Sulkowitz about anything you like, but if you stray to mattress territory, she'll direct you to Emmatron, who speaks, although her lips don't move, through an iPad app loaded with preset questions and answers of which Sulkowitz has grown tired. However, at the well-attended opening Saturday night, viewers wanting to learn more about mattress performance were out of luck. The recorded answers were difficult to hear amid the babble of conversation, rendering Emmatron effectively mute. Headphones might have helped, but would have run counter to the piece's spirit of convivality. Sulkowitz was friendly and energetic, smiling and enthusiastically greeting people who stepped up to speak with her, but there were rules. She refused to engage with anyone who was not on the pedestal, and there was no touching. A familiar concept when it comes to art objects, but a bit strange in, so in a social interaction. Still, her openness was brave. Yeah, because she wouldn't talk about the mattress girl problem that she caused. She, she, you don't hear anything about that, because we can't openly question the obvious victim in the room here. We can't talk about these things. We can't, you know, get to the truth of the matter. We can't challenge her, because isn't art meant to be challenging, so can't we challenge the artist in response? I can sound pretentious too. Performance art queen Marina Abramovich is an obvious reference here, I have no idea who that is, but Sulkowitz's piece is less a feat of physical endurance in which the body becomes an object than it is a kind of marathon of sociality. Indeed, with Emmatron, Sulkowitz has created a decoy of her objectification as a woman, as a celebrity, as a symbol. I'm sorry, I am very, very sorry, because once again, this whole omission of facts just makes me more angry. She was not objectified by the media or by Nungesser or by anyone. She did it herself. She was the one who flung herself into the spotlight. She was the one who went to the media. She's the one who made a porno, yet we're the ones who objectify her. No, the only person who did 
this was her because she got rejected and she wants people to give her attention she wants all of that and if you don't give it her well she'll be very unhappy to say the least of course the friendly Emma uh, Sulkowitz pedestal, pedestal was labelled maybe as much performance as Emma Tron but the piece pointedly asked her was to navigate the difference between engaging with someone as a pair and engaging with them as a thing I'm sorry but humans don't engage with people as things we engage with people as humans the only time we've ever engaged other human beings as things was when we need to kill them genocide for example this is ridiculous it's incredible how she's managed to do this I'm honestly quite angry because I've not actually read the full article about this bit of the story but fuck me Jesus Christ this is what happens this this is the societal double standard that we live in and yet feminists will claim that it's in favor of men and not women this is this is a plain example of the opposite being the case and I'm just angry but now we must move on to the actual story of this video because you've all been waiting for it and that is the news that she has recently been given NOW's otherwise known as the National Organization of Women's Woman of Courage Award and she also slams Camille Paglia in an Instagram post let's get stuck into it. Columbia's Mattress Girl awarded now Woman of Courage Award slams Camille Paglia. The National Organization for Women has awarded Emma Sulkowitz aka Mattress Girl with the Woman of Courage Award. Sulkowitz rose to national prominence after carrying a mattress around Columbia University to protest the non-expulsion of her alleged rapist. The man she accused was cleared of all charges and is now suing Columbia for asking Sulkowitz to torment him and ruin his reputation with her art project. As we said before people, yet the National Organization for Women seems to think that this is a good thing. To award this woman who was proven to lie, he's no longer an alleged rapist. He was proven to be innocent. He was cleared of all charges. So he can't be an alleged rapist. He's not a rapist. So they're awarding her a liar, someone who basically lied to authorities about this crime and an award for being brave. How is she being brave? I, I, this is not brave. But let's continue people. The award is often given to him for having demonstrated personal bravery in challenging entrenched power and in carrying out action that has the potential to benefit women in general. I'm sorry but how is this personal bravery in challenging entrenched power? This is not challenging power. This is enforcing the power that you feminists and social justice warriors have over the rest of us and especially students in college campuses. This is not challenging power. Nungesa had no power. All he did was have sex with her. How is that po Oh, of course. The personal is political and straight men have sex to take power over women. Maybe that's why, eh? Now? In an Instagram post, Sulkowitz took a shot at feminist intellectual Camille Paglia and dedicated the award to everyone who was not told me to get over it. Thank you for validating my fear and my way of handling it. You are not afraid. I have not seen a single piece of photography, video and writing where you look scared or feel scared. You are not scared. You have this constant psychopathic look on your face. Sometimes you're smiling. You're having a whale of a time. You, you have an art project. You are beginning to have a good career in art. He is battling the university for his reputation and to sue them when he could be suing you as well, but he can't because there's probably a lot of legal things there that he can't touch. He's having a terrible time of it and yet you are having an amazing time yet you've challenged entrenched power. No, this is the entrenched power giving you a career. You should not be anywhere near this in an ideal world. You would be laughed out of court, which you weren't even in court, you were laughed out by the authorities and the police. You should not be where you are now. You should just be living with your parents. But no, this is the real world and it's the real victim who has a tough time. But we'll be getting to that Instagram post in a minute, people. I just want to talk about more about the National Organization for Women. This is the same organization that claims to be about equal rights, yet will constantly try and stop anything to do with men's rights being enacted in law. They most famously have consistently managed to stop shared parenthood from being implemented in states and federal levels across the United States. And here we are seeing them once again supporting someone who's ruined a man's life and is a liar and look makes all rape victims look bad. This is the liar that they're supporting. If this does not show that feminism is not about so-called victims, I don't know what does. This is the biggest organisation backing this person. What annoys me is during the same time a porn actress uh, by the name of Cytheria was actually raped. In fact she was gang raped and robbed in front of her family in her home and she was traumatised now, what she did is a story worth 
putting into print because her assailants just happened to be black and in order to show that she was not prejudiced and that she was not afraid uh, she decided that her next project would be like a, a thing with black actors to show that yeah I'm not afraid I, I don't I know it's not all of you who do it and I'm not going to let them win and I think that's touching that's amazing yet yeah, National Organization for Women don't help Cytheria they don't care about Cytheria they only care about Emma Sulkowitz where's your priorities now let's get to the Instagram post people. Emma Sulk at Olivia Sulko caught me looking derpy with the Woman of Courage Award from my speech day. Camille Palia has publicly called my artwork a masochistic exercise in which I neither evolve nor move on. She speaks as if she, a white woman, knew what was best for me, a woman of colour she's never met. I'm sorry but Camille Palia was not talking like that. She was talking about you trying to move on from this whole shenanigans because you are basically trying to use this to further your career. That's what she's talking about. And this whole masochistic exercise is you basically flagellating yourself to make yourself look like a victim so that people get get sympathy and you get attention. That's what she's on about. She's telling you to stop and move on. You've had your day. Stop ma making this a big thing. But you won't. That's what she's saying. She's not saying she knows what's best for you as a white woman. And by the way, you're only half white, okay? So technically, she can have half a say about this. I'm just saying, Emma, you're like me. We're mutts. But let's just carry on. Many people ask me how I've healed from my assault, as if healing were another word for forgetting about it, or getting over it, or even shutting up about it. Yeah, see, we want you to shut up about how you won't stop lying. Stop lying and admit that you lied. We have actual evidence of you consenting to the sex and wanting more of it. That's not what rape victims do, is it? They don't have sex with their rapist consensually afterwards. Usually they call the police, but I don't know, you know? Just forget about it. You won. You buried Nungesser's reputation. You have an art career. Do forget about it. Shut up. Stop trying to get more attention. That's literally what people are saying. You were not assaulted. To expect me to move on is to equate courage with self-censorship. No, we're not asking you to self-censor yourself. We're just telling you to stop being a bitch. The phrases are suck it up, move on, and get over it are violence. <laughs> That is not violence. Jesus Christ, shut the fuck up. That is an absolute disgrace, what she said. That is not violence. That is an insult to all rape victims all over the world. And you should be ashamed of yourself for writing those words. People who say these phrases equate what is right and what is expected. I think courage means afraid in the way that makes you do what is right, even if it's unexpected. What, so lying about rape and trying to get someone expelled because he didn't want to have sex with you? Is that what's right, really? I dedicate this award to everyone who has not told me to get over it. Thank you for validating my fear and my way of handling it. Thank you for creating a world in which we can tackle the things that terrify us by doing the unexpected right thing. Thank you, National Organization for Women. And there's a few stupid comments of people. Notice how she never dedicates it to victims of rape or sexual assault or violence or anything like that. No, she dedicates it to her supporters, the people in the media, the people who blindly followed her, uh, her family, obviously, probably think that she was actually raped. I'm not going to claim that they are in it. I don't think so. I think if you're a mother or a father and someone who is your daughter or son even says that they were raped, you would believe them, wouldn't you? So I'm not going to blame them in any way. But she doesn't actually bother to even dedicate it to actual victims. So then again, what more proof do you want? It's all about her. Me, 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 my, 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 my fear, my way of handling it, this, that and the other. You don't have fear. You've never shown fear, like I said before. And this Instagram post, I hope is the last thing I ever see of Emma Sulkowitz, but I don't think it will be. As I said in my last video about her, this won't be the last thing. She's going to carry on pushing what she can. But hopefully the tide is turning, I hope, and people like her will no longer become successful through lies. So, this is the end of the video, people. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry it took so long to get to this, but I had a lot of things I needed to cover. So, see you later. <laughs>